Right. Oh, that's better. Okay, <laughs> hello, welcome. It's a Sunday and I'm home. And so that means it's time for Sunday Studio with me, Karen Margulis, and Heidi. Actually, Heidi came to visit us today. Hello, Heidi. And of course, Jenny is in her usual spot. Say hi, Jenny. Well, actually, she's quiet, so that's probably a good thing. All right. Today, I've been having a lot of fun in the studio this weekend, but today I'm going to answer that question that all pastelists probably wonder about, and that is, to blend or not to blend? That's the question. And as far as answers, I'm going to give you, not the, not the definitive answer, of course, but some food for thought when it comes to blending. So I'm going to talk to you for just a few minutes about blending, and then I'm going to do a demonstration in which I use a couple of different ways to blend the pastel. So, blending. Where do I feel? Well, where do I sit on this this uh, kind of seesaw? People on one end of the scale say, never touch the pastel. You should never blend. Don't put your fingers in it. Don't touch a tool to it. And then there are other artists who use blending very effectively and do beautiful paintings. And they have blended passages. I fall somewhere in the middle. I I blend occasionally. I don't blend a lot, but when I do blend, I am very much aware of what I'm blending together and how I'm going about doing it, so the technique that I use to blend. And I'm going to show you that on the demo today, but I want to talk to you just a little bit about blending and why it's something we really need to be aware of and not just do without thinking. Um, I find that when I work with artists who are new to pastel, the first thing that we want to do is always get in there and, and mush, mush it together. Take it and there's something really gratifying about that, putting your fingers in there and smushing it together. And so I think it's a good thing, but it's also important to realize what you're doing when you're blending. So let's talk about pastels and what they are. They are pure pigment mixed with a little binder, formed into a paste, and then a shape, and left to dry. So when we paint with them, we're actually painting with pure pigment. In the pigment are little particles and crystals, which is what makes them so luminous. So what happens when we, here's pastel, and then when we blend it with a finger or a tool, we are effectively crushing those crystals, which is why it looks dull. So you have fresh pastel, luminous, and then blended pastel where we crush the crystals and it looks flat and dull. Now, if you're trying to get, you know, you might want to move a little bit closer so that you can see these little uh, luminous, dull. Now, if you want a very soft, dull kind of passage in your painting, why then blending is perfect for it. If you don't and you wonder what's happening, that's one of the things that's happening. There's another thing, though, that happens when we blend. A lot of times when we blend, we're not paying attention to the colors that we blend together. Now, there's a difference between optically mixing or blending and physically mixing or blending. So when we optically mix, I'm going to just do a quick demo, we take a color, and one of the beautiful things about pastel is that we get to layer. Right, so we have one color, here I put a little orange down, then a little blue, then a little bit of a lighter blue together. So what happens is you kind of see all the colors together, they are optically blended, and they all play together nicely. Now, on the other hand, if I come in and say, I'm going to physically blend them together, see that's optically blending, they're just layered and they're not, blend, they're not pushed together. If I take my finger, and I blend, what ends up happening is I get the flat color. See the difference? Optical blend, physical blend. Not only am I getting flat color, but I'm getting dull, dirty color. Now, we would call this a neutral if we wanted it, but when we don't want it, we call it mud, right? So if you're wondering why am I getting muddy pastels uh, in, or muddy uh, passages in my painting, Pay attention to what you're blending together physically, because if you smush together warm and cool, or complements, or more than two or three colors together, you're going to, they're going to neutralize themselves, they're going to turn neutral or, or dull, or muddy if we don't want it to be that way. So when you blend, pay attention to the colors you're blending together, and about how you go about doing it. Now, before I start the demo, I want to say one other thing about blending. 
And this applies to those of you who are fairly new to pastel, maybe not so new to pastel, but I see it all the time. You're doing a painting and you know, you, uh, you got the water in, you got the sky and, and you, I don't like it. And we do this, we blend it like as if we're trying to erase it. Well, it doesn't erase and all we end up doing is creating dull, muddy color. We're pushing the pigment into the paper so we have less chance to make uh, corrections. A better way to correct mistakes, or even if you're frustrated, is to take a stiff brush, and I didn't bring one over, well actually, I might have one in my, yeah, handy, and just use a stiff brush to remove as much of the pastel as you possibly can, then you restore some tooth and you can start over. So blending does not erase, just keep that in mind. I use a, a tool and I share these at my workshop and I know a lot of you use these. This is pipe insulation foam. It's a great blending tool, but it's not an eraser. So oftentimes I'll see artists come try to do this and, and you're just really making mud. You're not erasing the pastel. I only use this tool in the very beginning layers of the painting. So I'm going to go ahead and start the painting so that you can see the different ways that I blend. So. I'm going to do this, I'll show you my scene. This is a really, really bad picture. So it's so bad, it's something's happening here, the printer made it pink. So I have to override that. So I'm obviously not gonna copy this um, scene. Uh, it's just to remind me or to kind of give me a, a, some inspiration. And what I did was I did a quick little color study over here on the same paper that I'm using so that I could see if the pastels that I've picked out are going to work. And let me, I don't, can you, can you um, show the pastels a little bit? What I'm going to use here, this is Terry Ludwig, Richard McKinley's um, landscape set, but I've supplemented with just a couple other colors that I want for the, for this particular painting. And then these are Diane Townsend's um, green. I, I forget what she calls it. Let me see so I can tell you in case you ask. Mood for green. So I've been having fun with these. Everything is so green here in Georgia. It's unbelievable. And then these are my grass uh, pastels in there. So this is what I'm going to be using for, for the painting this afternoon. So the first thing I'm going to do is I, I've uh, used a new pastel just to draw in the big shapes of the bushes and the pathway leading to this, the, 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 this is up over the dunes, and then the direction that I'm gonna put in my sky. So I'm gonna take this dark blue. Are they supposed to be painting along? What? Are they supposed to be painting along? Well, I, if you wanna paint really, really fast, you're more than welcome <laughs> to paint along. But I do this quickly just so that I can show you. It's not, it's not officially a paint along, but you're certainly welcome to. I really need to do a paint along video where I give you time and tell you what I'm doing and tell you know so that you can get set up. Um, but but one thing you can do if you want to paint along and you're not ready, I put the video on YouTube when I'm finished and you can always go back and then afterwards get your stuff set up and then you can have a chance to go back and be ready. So the first thing I'm going to do, by the way, I'm working on Canson Miton paper, the, the unsanded paper. This is Moonstone, which is my favorite color when I use Canson. I really like Canson paper. So I love UART. That's my favorite go-to brand. But every once in a while, I like working on this paper. So I block in the darks. Now I'm going to block in the lights of the sky. And I'm not worried about using hard pastels versus soft pastels. I'm really worried, more, more, not worried, more interested in getting the right color uh, and value. And the idea that I want to completely fill the, um, the paper with a layer of pastel before I blend. So I am going to actually blend something here. But I just want to put down a layer all over the paper. Now I'm going to put in some of the um, color of some of these little, it looks like little dried 
clumps of grasses. That's what it. That's what I'm. I'm saying. That's what I got. That's what it looks like to me. So I'm using some of those grass colors just to fill in, and then. Ellen Rose is awake. What's that? Ellen Rose is here. Ellen Rose. We have to talk, my friend. I'm so excited for you. All right. So, let's see. I need to put in some color on the pathway. And I don't want to make it the lightest color that I see there, that sand color yet. I, I, actually, I'm going to make it into a gold color. And I can always tone it down. I'd rather have it a little bit brighter than... Um, and tone it down and try to get it exciting again. All right, now I'm going to do my very first blending. So I filled the entire paper with pastel, and I'm going to blend the first layer in. I'm going to use the piece of pipe insulation foam, which I've torn into a piece. So I'm going to use it like a brush. And I'll start with the sky with a lighter color. And I'm going to blend it in as if I were painting. So the, the direction that I want to make my mark, that's the direction that I'm using the blending tool. Now, I'm going to do the, uh, the bushes, so I'm going to change my direction on how I blend those in. Some other. I wanted to connect the dark shapes. I might have to go back and redo some of those. But for now, I'm going to do the path. For now, they're going to have to be the way they are. So, that's the first stage. I've blended the entire first layer in, and I used this piece of uh, pipe foam. I like the pipe foam because it doesn't remove too much of the pastel. It blends it in just enough, but it doesn't take away too much. Um, and I don't know if you know about this, but I have a friend who puts them in the wash. So, you know, it is, they're inexpensive as they are, but you can reuse them, which is nice to know. <clears throat> so the next thing that I'm going to do... Oh, and why am I blending in the first layer? I should say that. The reason why is I'm trying to get a very soft, out-of-focus underpainting. This is the block-in stage. So that way I can decide where I want to put focus. I don't want focus on every piece of grass. <coughs> Excuse me. So having everything out of focus will let me kind of sneak up on it. Um, and the second reason I blend in the first layer, and it's not so important on this Canson, this color paper, Moonstone, but if I'm working on very light paper, so you are, or white paper, I don't want to have all the little light bits peeking through. So when I blend in the first layer, it allows me to pretty much tone the paper, but I'm really creating a road map for the painting. It's not just the toned orange. Right? It's got a map so I know where to go with it. So there's two good reasons for me to blend in that first layer. Now after I've done that, I'm going to go back and I'm going to reinforce the dark areas. So I want to get... I'm going to put on my glasses for this part. The glasses are so, so I can see the color a little bit better. I'm going to go back and reinforce those dark areas, so these dark bushes, um, this shadowed bush area that's along the edge of the pathway, right along here, kind of the shadow areas that are underneath some of these shrubs, these, these clumps of grasses. We decided that they were clumps of grasses. And I want to have the dark areas connected as much as I can, so that's what I'm doing there. I'm going to go over that with another layer. Now I'm working on cans on paper, so if you work on cans on paper, you know you don't have as many opportunities for layering as you do with sanded paper. So I have to be aware of that. I'm using a light touch for the most part, but I still have to be aware of um, how many layers I'm going to be able to get. Now, let's see. i got to add some, <coughs> excuse me, some green to these clumps. Now, I, I'm not blending yet. I'm just reinforcing the dark. So I'm going to get to my second part of blending in just a minute. I want to add some green to the distant, uh, to the bushes that are further 
back. So I'm going to add a cooler kind of gray down green back there. And then, let's see, I think this will work. Add a little bit of light to the bushes that are a little bit larger, but they're still in the distance, so I don't want them to be a bright green. So I'm using a dull kind of grayed down green. Now that I have the darks in place, I'm going to go ahead and do the lights. Now in this painting, the light is in the sky, so that means I'm going to go ahead and paint the sky. Now, let's talk about skies. Skies are, are really uh, one of the few places that I'll actually blend. If I have some a painting that has a very uh, busy foreground or busy ground, that means some, there's a lot going on on the ground, then I really want a sky that has a little bit of calm to it. So I don't want a sky that's really super active with a lot going on. So that's a good candidate for blending. Now, you've probably all heard it said that you don't really need to blend with a tool or your finger. Let the pastels blend themselves. Well, what exactly does that mean? How do they blend themselves? Well, they blend themselves if you start if you add enough layers. So what's happening here is they are actually starting to blend themselves. If you notice, I'm going back and forth with several of the blue um, blues that I have in this box. There's a dark <coughs> several. <coughs> excuse me values of blue that I'm using. The more I blend them together, the more I go over it, you, the more you can see they're starting to blend themselves. And that's what it means by having the pastels blend themselves. And basically all it requires is that you have a little bit of patience when you're working on this to allow them to start to blend themselves. But what if you have this big huge sky and you don't have time or you don't want to go over it like that? You can actually blend this is the only other way I blend. I, by the way, this goes away. You know, we're not going to use that anymore. If I use that on this, it's going to take away too much of the pastel and make it flat and muddy. I want to preserve this luminosity. So what I'm going to do, if I have a very big painting, I'd use the side of my palm or my palm. And I would just go in very lightly, blend it together. But on a small painting, I'm going to just use my pinky finger. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to just simply... Pretend that my finger is a butterfly and it's just flitting from flower to flower and dipping here and pulling back up and what I'm doing is I'm gently blending these layers together but I'm not pressing so hard that I'm breaking down all the crystals. I mean, I am to some extent but for the most part I'm doing it so lightly that I preserve a lot of that glow or luminosity and then what I like to do is go back on top of it with some fresh pastel. And then that kind of gives it a, um, a little bit of a fresh coating. Now I've got up in the sky, I've got some cloud action going on. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that as well. So I'm going to add a little bit. <clears throat> the clouds are, are lightly colored. I wouldn't say they're white. So I'm going to mix a little... Let's mix a little pink in there, a little blue. Let's see if I have a little violet. And there's some clouds down here as well. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with my finger. And I'm blending it very, very softly and gently. And now I'm going to come with my lighter colors. Let's see, I have two in here. A very, very pale yellow. No, I'm pressing down pretty hard because this is the last, basically the last color that I'm going to use for this area. And the clouds kind of come down this direction. By the way, when I'm painting clouds, I'm really not trying to um, copy exactly what I see in the in a photograph, but rather design the clouds so that they make a more interesting composition, that they help support my composition. So I just kind of, these clues, these clouds are giving me kind of a clue, and then I'm going from there. I'm pressing down, I'm shouting now, so I really want to cover the paper with this, right on the edges. And then I'm going to come back with the blue, 
and there's a little bit of blue that kind of breaks up some of these clouds so I'm going to sneak in with some of the blue that I have and then I've got a warmer blue down at the, at the horizon and then I'm going <clears> to <throat> break up some of these bushes here and another time I blend is sometimes I will use my pinky finger to soften an edge so if I'm creating these uh, sky holes where the sky is peeking through the bushes so I put in the sky holes and then I take my finger and I flick them and I flick them so that I soften them so that they don't look like uh, Christmas ornaments and then I gotta come back with a little bit of fresh pastel over here pull some out up on the sky Alright, so then, that's it with the sky for now, uh, and I'm going to work my way down. So I want to add some color, some dirt color. So let's go ahead and get some purples going on. We'll add some purple in the shadows, <coughs> excuse me, underneath, on the, uh, underneath the bushes coming out onto the sand. And... Let's see, we need some purples that are going to be underneath these kind of golden um, grasses. And then finally we can start to put in that pathway just a little bit. Now the pathway in the distance is going to be a little bit duller than, the, than where we see it in the foreground. So I'm going to start with a very dull rosy pink. I don't want to have the too bright white, like sandy. Where does it kind of sneaks in here? And then I'm going to change this, but I want to at least put it in for now. And it kind of empties off into this area here and sneaks up into the shadows. So that's the start of the path. Now I'm going to come in and start with some of these bushes in the back, and some of these bush shapes. And I'm just looking at the photo just to give me some ideas of how some of these little bushes are growing. I'm going to move this one over for now. I don't want the, the uh, they're kind of dull in the distance. So I'm using not the bright greens or the bright golds back here. Just keep it a little bit duller so it looks like it's further back. And there's some green stuff starting to grow in here. So I can throw a little bit of that in. And as far as the blending, because that's what we're talking about today, I'm pretty much to the point where I'm done with the blending for this particular painting. So I blended the sky, I blended that very first layer, and now I'm really not, I don't want too much more blending because I want everything to feel as though it were fresh and exciting and not dull and, and all blended away. So I use blending as a tool, but only um, in small doses and only for very particular reasons. So I don't use it to erase. I don't use it when I'm building up layers. Now I'm letting the pastels blend themselves. So it's a very valid thing. It really actually works. The more layers I go over, then the more they start to get blended. Now, another thing that is starting to happen here, because it's the canvas on paper, and because I'm trying to work fast, is I, you start to fill the tooth of the paper. So if I want to have some of these really grassy bits look grassy, I'm going to have to take out my um, can of fix it in just a minute. Caitlin's here. Wow, oh, hi, Caitlin. I'm going to give it a quick spray because then I can finish the rest of it very lightly. This is the, the Blair Low Odor Workable Fixative. That was too quick. Blair Low Odor Workable Fixative. 
I like it because it it darkens the colors and dulls the colors, and and I and I want that to happen. Um, because what I want, <clears throat> what I want to do now is go over this with, with um, pastel, and it's giving me more tooth. So you can see that it's going on a lot more readily. See how that's going on now? And I was struggling just a few minutes ago. So it restored some of the tooth, and it allows me to get a little bit more layers on there. Alright, now what I'm going to do is refine this pathway just a little bit more. So I've got this dull color in the background, and right about in the middle, it's going to start to get a little bit brighter. So, oh, I just use my finger. See, sometimes I do it and I'm not even aware of it. So I'll use a finger to just soften an edge. It's always a good thing. I'm sneaking some of this in some of the sand color in between some of the, the bushes. And then I'm going to take some of that sky color and put it in some of the shadow areas here. And if I want it a little bit duller, I can use my finger and then very softly soften it just with the flick of your finger. And if you want to have, do I use this brighter color? This one's a little bit brighter. So right here I'm going to put in a few little bits and pieces of some seashells. So I'm going to press those in a little bit harder. <clears throat> so you can see <clears throat> excuse me, more stuff in the foreground than you would in the distance. Give them a little bit of shadow underneath, a little purple shadow. Now, I'm going to leave this as it is right now because this, the uh, demo for today was on blending. And you can see that most of it was blended. Now, if I want to add more detail, which I probably will, will refine it a little bit more. But at this stage, I'm going to stop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on it a little bit more, um, refine it a little bit more. And I'm going to put the finished painting both on my blog. And here's you can find my blog. KarenMargulis.com, and then you'll be able to see the video um, up till this point again on Facebook or on YouTube when I get put it there. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer the questions. Um, just write them in on the comments, and I'll be happy to answer them when I get to them. And I'm going to work on this a little bit more, and I'll I'll get back to you with the with the finish. But I want to thank you for um, your attention today, and. So long from Heidi and Jenny, and we'll see you next time.